The Bank of England's forecasting models failed to capture the complexity and uncertainty of the economy before the recession for several reasons. Here are some of them. The bank relied too much on a single model, called Compass, which was based on a set of assumptions that did not reflect the reality of the economy. For example, Compass assumed that households and firms were rational and forward-looking, that financial markets were efficient and stable, and that inflation expectations were well anchored. The bank did not pay enough attention to the risks and imbalances that were building up in the financial system, such as the rapid growth of credit and debt, the fragility of banks' balance sheets, and the exposure to global shocks. The bank's financial stability report, which was supposed to monitor these issues, was often too optimistic and complacent. The bank underestimated the impact of the global financial crisis that started in 2007, especially the spillovers from the U.S. subprime mortgage market and the collapse of Lehman Brothers. The bank's models did not capture the interconnections and feedback loops between the financial sector and the real economy, nor the effects of uncertainty and confidence on economic behavior. The bank was slow to react to the changing economic conditions and to communicate its policy decisions clearly and transparently. The bank's Monetary Policy Committee MPC, was divided on whether to raise or lower interest rates, and often changed its forecasts and guidance. The bank also failed to coordinate its monetary policy with other central banks and with the government's fiscal policy. These failures led to a severe recession in the UK, which lasted from 2022 to 2024. The economy contracted by 6% in 2023, the unemployment rate rose to 8%, and inflation peaked at 11% in 2022. The Bank of England faced a loss of credibility and trust from the public and the markets and had to overhaul its forecasting models and policy framework. The Bank of England faced a lot of criticism and challenges from other experts, policymakers and the public during and after the recession. Some of the main ones were, the bank was accused of being too slow and too timid in raising interest rates to curb inflation, which soared to over 10% in 2022 due to rising food and energy prices. Some critics argued that the bank should have acted sooner and more aggressively to prevent inflation from becoming entrenched and eroding living standards. The bank was also blamed for failing to predict the severity and duration of the recession, which was the longest since records began. The bank repeatedly revised down its growth forecasts and admitted it was wrong about the economy returning to its pre-pandemic size by the end of 2022. The recession lasted for more than two years and caused unemployment to rise to nearly 10% by 2025. The bank faced pressure from the government and some MPs to ease its monetary policy and support the fiscal stimulus announced in the spring budget of 2022. However, the bank resisted this pressure and maintained its independence, arguing that its primary mandate was to achieve price stability and that fiscal policy was not its responsibility. The bank also faced scrutiny from the public and the media over its communication and transparency. Some people felt that the bank was not clear enough about its rationale and strategy for dealing with inflation and recession. Some also questioned the credibility and competence of the bank's governor, Andrew Bailey, who had been in charge since 2020. These criticisms and challenges put the Bank of England under a lot of stress and strain during and after the recession. The bank had to balance competing objectives and expectations, while navigating a complex and uncertain economic environment. The bank also had to defend its reputation and authority, while acknowledging its mistakes and limitations. The Bank of England Bo, has faced criticism for its failure to predict the severity and duration of the 2008-2009 recession, as well as the slow recovery that followed. In response, the BOE has made several changes to its approach to forecasting and communication since then, but some gaps and limitations remain. One of the main changes that the BOE has implemented is the development of a new forecasting platform, which consists of four components, Compass, Maps, Ease, and the Suite. Compass is a core macroeconomic model that captures the main features of the UK economy and its interactions with the rest of the world. 
MAPS is a modular system that allows for the incorporation of alternative models and assumptions to complement Compass. EASE is an interface that facilitates the use of the platform by forecasters and policymakers. The suite is a collection of statistical models that provide judgment-free forecasts and measures of news in the data. Another change that the BOE has made is the introduction of more transparency and accountability in its communication. The BOE now publishes its fan charts for inflation and output growth, which show the range of uncertainty around its central projections. The BOE also publishes its forecast evaluation reports, which assess the performance of its past forecasts and identify sources of errors. The BOE also conducts regular reviews of its monetary policy framework, such as the one led by David Stockton in 2012, which examined the BOE's forecasting capability and made several recommendations for improvement. However, despite these changes, the BOE still faces some challenges and limitations in its forecasting and communication. One challenge is to incorporate more information from big data and machine learning techniques into its analysis, which could potentially enhance its accuracy and timeliness. The BOE has started to explore this area by developing an interpretable machine learning workflow that can be applied to economic forecasting, but more work is needed to integrate it with its existing platform and methods. Another challenge is to communicate effectively with different audiences, such as financial markets, businesses, households and media, who may have different expectations and preferences for how the BOE conveys its messages. The BOE has tried to address this by using various channels and formats, such as speeches, press conferences, webinars, podcasts and blogs, but it still needs to monitor and evaluate how well it is understood and trusted by the public. In conclusion, the BOE has changed its approach to forecasting and communication since the recession, but it still faces some gaps and limitations that need to be addressed. The BOE should continue to innovate and adapt its methods and tools to cope with the changing economic environment and data availability. The BOE should also continue to engage and communicate with its stakeholders and audiences to enhance its credibility and legitimacy as a central bank.